Math. Hello, this is Mr. Regner, and this is another exciting edition of The Aftermath. Today on The Aftermath, we're focused on focus, and we're going to be looking at week 12, day number two activity. So feel free to check this out on your own as we go through it together. So with all uh, that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at number one. Number one says, multiple choice. What is the value of the expression below when a equals 5, b equals 9, and c equals 7? 9b minus 4c plus 5a. So to solve this problem, we just have to use the information they've given us, substitute the values for those variables, and then solve just like any other expression. So let's get to our paper and let's get to work. All right, so here I am on my paper. I'm simply going to rewrite this expression, but instead of the B, the C, and the A, I'm going to exchange them because I know that A equals 5, B equals 9, and C equals 7. So you want to be cautious because obviously those values will change from one day to the next. But we're on day number two activity, so I'm going to write them as is. So I have 9B, so I know that's 9 times 9. Now what I like to do is group them together. So 9B is grouped together as 9 times 9. That just makes it a little bit easier for me uh, just to sort it all out. So I'm going to set up my problem just as is substituting the variables for their values as defined in the problem. All right, so now it's just order of operations. I know that I just do multiplication first, and I'll work from left to right. So I have 9 times 9, that's 81 minus 4 times 7 plus 5 times 5. Okay, next I'll do 4 times 7. That's 81 minus 4 times 7 is 28 plus 5 times 5. Next I'll do 5 times 5. That's 81 minus 28 plus 25. Now I have to do my subtraction first because I use subtraction and addition in the same step and work from left to right. So 81 minus 28. I'm not sure what that is off the top of my head, but I have this special power, special ability. And it's not just me, you have it too. And that's the ability to do math off to the side. So check me out over here. Woohoo! Here I go. All right, so I have uh, one minus eight. I can't do it, I have to borrow. This one becomes an 11. Now I'm looking at 11 minus eight. Well, that's much easier for me. And then seven minus two. Hey, look at me. I figured out that it's 53. I just made a rhyme. I'm doing it all the time. I'm not sure how it happens, but I'm just going to let it. And that didn't rhyme. So I have 53 plus 25. Honestly, I have no idea what just happened to me. All right, and that would be 78. As I look at my options, Option B is 78, and I found the answer to my problem. So once again, for number one, it's just simply substituting the values that we know are there. So pretty easy stuff there. Then it's just a matter of order of operations. Let's roll on to number two. I'm gonna let you know number two up front seems kind of complex. There's a lot going on in the word problem. So this is an example of where you might have to read the problem, reread the problem, and maybe even read it again before you understand fully what it's asking you to do. And so for my example, I'm reading it once and moving on. I'm going to assume that you will have the uh, ability to stop yourself, reread it if necessary. So with all that being said, let's take a look at the problem. You have $11, one of your friends has $12, and two of your other friends each have $8. You combine your money to buy arcade tokens. You use a coupon to buy 12 tokens for $1. The cost of the remaining tokens is eight for one dollar. You and your friends share the tokens evenly. How many tokens does each person get? All right, so again, I told you this one was heavy on wordage. There's a lot of words there in that problem, so read it carefully. When you really do read it and understand what's going on, you know that there's a group of friends, including you, you're putting your money together, you're buying arcade tokens, and you're gonna split the tokens evenly. So we have to do some math to figure out how much money you have first, second, how many tokens you can buy, and finally, how many tokens each person is going to get. So let's take a look at our problem and we'll do some work on the paper. All right, so here we are, and I wanna make, make it super clear that there's you, there's one of your friends, and then there's two of your other friends. All right, so I'm gonna split up my paper here into three parts. So I'm gonna figure out how much money I, I have. Oops, you know, it always helps 
on the video to be able to see the paper. Just a little tip that I've discovered over the years here. So I want to figure out how much money that I have, right? And I want to figure out how many tokens I can buy. And then I want to figure out how many tokens per person. All right, so the way I like to do this is I think that you have $11. Okay, so that's $11. And then one of your friends, we're gonna call them friend one, has $12. And then you have two of your other friends that each have $8, all right? So we'll call them friends two and three. They each have $8, okay? So now I wanna figure out the total money that I have here. Uh, once I pull all the money together from all of my friends. All right, so I'll do some quick math here. And the way that I'm doing this is kind of mental math. All right, so I look at this, I see 12 and eight. I think they go together because they equal 20 between them. If I add on 11, that would be 31. And then add on eight, that would be 39. So I know we have $39 total. So now I wanna think about how many tokens I can buy with $39. So first, there is this coupon that I have to worry about. It says buy 12 tokens for a dollar. So I'm gonna take my $39 that I had, I'm gonna subtract one, and that gives me $38 left. But with that $1, I'm buying 12 tokens. Because again, we got that special coupon to buy 12 for one, all right? Okay, next it says the cost of the remaining tokens is eight for $1. Okay, so if I have $1, I can get eight, but I have $38. That means I can multiply that by eight to figure out how many tokens I can get in all. So eight times eight is 64. Eight times three is 24 plus six, that's 30. That means 304 tokens. But I wanna figure out the total tokens. So I have 12 tokens plus 304. That means I'm going to add them together. So that gives me 316 altogether. And I figured that out by just adding up 12 plus 304. Okay, so now with 316 tokens and with one, two, three, four people to split it amongst, I'm gonna take 316 and divide by four. So I think to myself, how many times does four go into 31? Well, the simple answer there is it doesn't. If I did eight times, I'd have 32 can't do that, I have to do seven. And then seven times four is 28, I'll subtract. That leaves me with three, I'll bring down my six. All right, so there's our work for number two. As I said, it's kind of a complex problem, but when you really break it down into those three steps that I just showed you, finding how much money you have, finding out how many tokens you can buy, and then finally figuring out how many tokens each person gets, that problem that seems so complex becomes much, much easier. So make sure you practice that and be ready for it for this Thursday's quiz. Let's roll on and take a look at number three. Number three says a garden is built on a rooftop. The perimeter, find the perimeter of the garden. Okay, so for this one, we've got a garden that looks kind of, uh, you know, 3D-ish. We're looking at it, you know, from the front and looking back at it. I like to use a strategy here where I draw that garden from like a bird's eye view from up top. When I can look at it that way, it kind of helps me to visualize and see where the uh, edges would be, see what shape I'm dealing with, and ultimately helps me figure out the unknown measurements of the sides I don't know. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so this one, it sort of looks like uh, Oklahoma, sort of looks like a frying pan, however you wanna think of it, but we kind of have a, a garden that looks like this. So I'm gonna just fill in the measurements that I know. So this back side here is 24 feet, this side is 18 feet, this side is 14 feet, and this side is six feet. So I obviously have some unknowns here. All right, so I'm gonna maybe make a circle here and here, because those are the two sides that I don't know. But as luck would have it, I have the ability to do some math here. So I know that from here to here approximately is 18, that's an eight, 18 feet, because this is 18 feet right? And then from here to here, that would be 24 feet because this is 24 feet. So think about it. If I filled in this missing little chunk, I'd have a rectangle and a rectangle is going to have the, the two sides equal each other. So if I wanted to figure out this length right here, okay, I have 24 feet total 
14 of it is consumed by this line right here. So I could take 24 minus 14 and it gives me my missing measurement here. All right, so 24 minus 14. That's gonna leave me with 10 feet for this measurement. And then I can do the same uh, concept here. So I have 18 feet total. Six of it is taken up right here. So I have 18 minus six and 18 minus six is gonna leave me with 12 feet right there. Okay, so if I wanna find the perimeter of that garden, I need to add up all the sides. Perimeter would be the measurement of the outside of my garden, right? So I'm gonna have six sides that I'm adding up. And one thing that I like to do is go through and just check off the sides as I count them and as I include them in my problem. All right, so I have 24, check, that's a check mark, 18, check, 14, check, 12, check, 10, check, and six, check. And I've got them all, I've got all my sides. So now it's just a matter of adding these up. And we know about some properties in math that allow us when we're adding these numbers together to rearrange them, reconfigure them. And so you may wanna do that because I know we're adding up six numbers here. That can be an awful lot. Another strategy is that you could just simply like divide and conquer, right? So maybe I'll add these two, then I'll add these two, then I'll add these two. And now I'm looking at uh, maybe an easier math problem. That's the strategy I'm gonna use today. All right, so I'm gonna start off with just these two, right? So I have 24 plus 18. So eight plus four is gonna give me 12. Then I'm gonna have a one that I carry over. Two plus one plus one is gonna give me four. I'll do the same thing here. So I have 14 plus two. Four plus two is six. One plus one is two. Same thing here. 10 plus six, that's gonna give me 16. Now, if I'm feeling confident, I could just add these three together, which, you know what? I'm feeling confident, so let's do it. All right, I have two plus six, that's eight, plus six, that's 14. So I'm gonna put my four here and my one up here. I have four plus one, that's five, plus two, that's seven, plus one, that's eight. That gives me 84 as a final answer. So the total of all six of these is 84. But I wanna make sure I include a proper label. So whenever I'm talking perimeter, I know it's just the outside measurement, right? It's kind of like if I take all these walls and flatten them out and straight, straighten them out, how far would it be? So my label here is feet, 84 feet, not feet squared, not feet cubed, just feet. All right, so that's number three. As we go on to number four, I want you to remember the rules for perimeter and what perimeter is, because if we just did it on number three, we're gonna do the same thing on number four, finding perimeter except number four is a little bit twisted because it's multiple answers. Some of our answer options uh, are correct, some of them are not correct, and we need to choose the correct statement. So let's go to the paper and get to work. So number four is here. A section of land is used to be fenced in for a horse pasture. Fencing costs $23 per yard. Which statements below are true based on this information? All right, so a couple key things here. First, it's $23 per yard. I know that one yard equals three feet. I'm gonna write that right on my paper right next to that problem because that's probably gonna come in handy later on. As I look at my options here, letter A says to find the cost of the fencing needed, you would multiply 1,505 by three and then multiply by 23. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what? That doesn't make any sense. Well, what they did is they tried to figure out the perimeter. So I'm gonna pull out another sheet of paper here and move this over. Now everything's in view and this is looking good. So I'm gonna take my measurements here for my pasture, which yes, it looks like it's a house, but it's not, okay? So I'm gonna take all those measurements. I have 225 plus 225. I'm just adding all the sides. 340, 320, and 395. So again, probably not to scale here, but we're gonna add these up and that's gonna tell me the measurement of the perimeter of the outside. So five plus five plus five, that's gonna give me 15. One plus two, that's three, plus two, that's five, plus four, that's nine, plus two, that's 11, plus nine, that's 20. And then two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Hey, look at that, so they got 1,005, 
or 1,505 feet. That's the number they gave me. So think about it. Would I multiply that by 3 and then multiply by 23? So this is how many feet there would be. If I want to figure out how many yards there would be, knowing there's one yard in three feet, I would not be multiplying this. If I multiply this, I'm going to get a much bigger number. And if I'm converting this to yards from feet to yards, feet are going to, there's going to be more feet than there are yards. All right, so I need a smaller number. So because of this word multiply, letter A is not right. Instead, look at B. It says to find the cost of the fencing needed, you would divide 1,505 by 3 and then multiply by 23. Think about that for a moment. I take this divided by 3. That tells me how many yards I have. And then multiply by 23 because it costs $23 per yard of the fencing. So letter B is actually correct. We're dividing the feet in order to get the yards. And then letter C says to find the cost of the fencing needed, you would divide 1,505 by 3. I like what I'm hearing so far. And then divide by 23. Whoops. They had me there early and then they lost me when we're dividing. Okay, think about it, it's $23 per yard. If I figure out how many yards there are by dividing 1,505 by three, then I'm gonna have to multiply by 23 because that's how much each yard costs. I'm not gonna divide by 23, so I can't say C is correct either. Letter D says to find the amount of fencing needed, you could use this expression, two times 225 plus 320 plus 340. So let's look at what I did over here. So I have two times 225. Well, there's two of them, right? So I could say that's times two, right? I have 320, looking good so far. 340, I'm on the right track. And then, oh wait, they forgot about 395. So I'm not so keen on that. I don't like that one. That one does not work. Here's another one though. To find the amount of fencing needed, you could use this expression. 395, let's see, we've got it. 2 times 225, got it. 340, got it. And 320, got it. So letter E works in that situation, and that would be a correct answer. So my only correct answers here are B and E, but it's important to go through each option and make sure that they are definitely correct or definitely incorrect. All right, so there you have it. There's our focus for this week. Again, know about perimeter. We get a chance to practice at two different times. Look over number two, that's kind of a tricky question, but it'll be the same question all week long with different numbers. So if you know how to answer it once, you know how to answer it twice, three times even, for day number three, then you're ready for your quiz on day number four. And finally, just make sure you can substitute for number one and you'll be in good shape. So I'm Mr. Regner, this has been The Aftermath. I hope you have a great day. Math. Aftermath, it's the aftermath. Aftermath, it's the aftermath Math class is fun, but when it's done Stay in the zone On your own, it's math review Made just for you Take a video wherever you go Aftermath, it's the aftermath Aftermath, it's the aftermath Oh yeah